to Breakfast Television. Thank you very much. Which Thank of your songs would you have picked? Well, I don't know. Maybe so. I, well, that, that's an old song. I've heard. I've heard that song a lot. Yeah, maybe <laughs> played it once or twice. A illustrious career you've had, and I guess let's kick it off and say congratulations on the uh, being an inductee for the Canadian Music Industry Hall of Fame. It's a huge deal. Thank you. Yeah, we're heading off next week. We're doing a show uh, at Lee's Palace to kind of. Uh, kick off this new live record that we just did. Right, congratulations on that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we recorded uh, the Commodore shows when we were here in town. We did recorded three nights, but as it turned out, I just used the, uh, the Saturday night. Uh, it turned out to be the night that we used for the for the show. For the, straight through. Straight through. I, I pulled a few songs. Actually, I pulled that song. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you say before that that is one of your least favorites. Well, it's not that, it, you know, it's just that it's 20 some years ago. Yeah, that's true. And you move on, you know. But you still crush it. You know, I don't mind doing it here and there, and, and that's fine. But, uh, um, you know, there's been so many records since then of so many different songs, but... Let's talk about the Commodore. Don't you have, like, the world record for most sellouts there or something crazy like that? As far as I know, I think it's tragically hip in myself. Like it. And I, I may, there may be someone else, but I'm not positive on that. I think 5440's up there as well for yeah. most consecutive shows. Five or, Nights is yeah. what we did in, in 89. <sighs> and I uh, actually wrote a little thing about it the other day because I, I was kind of explaining that, you know, at the time, I, I think... You know, when you first start and things start going well for you, you don't really uh, embrace what's going on. You know, you're so busy getting on planes and trying to fulfill this thing and that thing. And I remember it was one of the first times I kind of sat back and went, wow, this is going pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, five nights at the Commodore. And I remember being quite, uh, I was just really genuinely excited. When I first moved here, when I was like 18 or 19, you know, that was like the venue, and I got kicked out of there when I went to try to, well, not kicked out, but they wouldn't let me in when I went to go see a show when I was a kid. And so that was really amazing feeling at the time when I kind of stopped long enough to kind of realize that, uh, hey, you know, we were I was making a go of it, you know. But um, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, I'm really excited about this new record, and uh, you brought up the Hall of Fame thing. We're, we're, we're doing the show at Lee's Palace. And then I think it's the next night that we do this Hall of Fame induction. See, when you look back, and it's so great to see a musician with this type of longevity in the business, what do you remember about your very first time on stage when you realized, hey, this is, this is gonna be my way of life? <sighs> when was the first time? I, I guess, uh, you know, I started out playing in, 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 a, in a band around Saskatchewan. Uh, when I was 13 to 16, and when I was 16, I opened up for John Lee Hooker. That'll do it. At the Education Auditorium. Oh, wow. And uh, I got to meet him, and um, uh, I was already a huge John Hammond Jr. fan, and uh, that same year I opened up for George Thorogood, um, and it, that was, you know, amazing. And um, then I moved to Winnipeg and got my first job at the Winnipeg Folk Festival at a afternoon workshop where I got my name in the program and you know from then on it's been just go go. How, let's talk about your guitar collection because you did a you did a showcase up at uh, Whistler when I was working at the shore. You did the first ever music on the mountain fest that we did and I just remember you having this lineup of guitars off to the side of the stage like do you have a little guitar problem like I have a shoe problem? Uh, well I mean, I'm not so sure if it's a problem. It's a gift. Uh, it's a gift. It's a gift. <laughs> it's definitely a shoe gift. I'm not like some where I gather them just for the sake of gathering them. Yeah. Like all the guitars I have are working guitars. I have one that's not a, not necessarily because it's been signed by Albert Collins, Albert King, Otis Rush, Pop Staples. Yeah. Uh, who else signed it? Teeny Hodges, who wrote "Take Me to the River." And uh, who else is on it? Buddy Guy. So, and it was presented to me one night, one particular night. Uh, I hosted a thing in uh, Montreal years ago where they all played the same night. And of course, a lot of these guys are gone now. So that's so, that's one I don't play. It's a it's a pink Stratocaster. Um, a pink Stratocaster. <laughs> but uh, every other guitar I have, they're, they're, they all have a, a place. They all get played. They don't just sit on the wall, you know. Small follow-up question. Uh, did you secretly buy a guitar without telling your wife about it? Yeah, there was a... Uh, an <laughs> did she tell you that maybe you should marry it? <laughs> there was an incident uh, relative... arms are folded. <laughs> Here's the body <laughs> language of Colin. Oh, damn. Well, what happened was I had put an order in on a guitar, and uh, I didn't tell her about it because, you know, doesn't have to know everything about it's a everything. Decision? <laughs> Look at these guys. That was a business yeah, decision, like exactly. For, he's an artist. He and uses I did the Bro Jake show. Right. And uh, 
uh, he sold me out. Because I, well, the I, I broke, code? yeah, because I told him about, I told, I just kind of mentioned in passing that I've got this guitar in order. I'm really excited. This guy should be here anytime. And I think he forgot that this was a somewhat uh, clandestine event. And, uh, and he mentioned, mentioned it right on the air. And my wife, who doesn't usually listen to the interview, happened to be driving somewhere and, and had the radio on. So I sh my, my cell phone rang. As it was being said, my cell phone rang. And I went, oh, no. So busted. So Yeah, I'm so busted. But the bright side of the, it's the, it's the I love this. It's, a, it's a, my new Strat, and I just love it. So well, I'm glad you love it. Is there anything sweet you want to say to your wife that might be watching this right now? And just reach out? It wasn't so bad. Hey, new guitar, needed it, had to have it, right? It was Serenade. To follow, I'm gonna call in on this. It's important. Yeah. Yes. I did craft. not have a white strat, so. Right. Yeah. It's important. And the Juno nomination, which is huge as well for 15. Uh, after this many years in the business, what does the Juno nomination mean to you now? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's getting me in Regina, so obviously there's a bit of a sentimental thing there. Uh, you know, uh, the last time I was at the Junos was actually in Saskatoon, and uh, but Regina being my hometown, uh, uh, you know, that'll be kind of. That'll be that'll be fun. I think Regina is really looking forward to it and hosting it, and uh, um, it'll be great. I'm really looking forward to it. I, I haven't I, I haven't actually got a Juno since 1999, so it's hopefully time. I'm hoping I can break the drought. Let's talk about uh, G. Roy Simon. Now We're he, a little jealous that he's a member of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. That's now. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So do you, do you split your allegiance, or are you a big Rough Riders fan? I mean, most people from Saskatchewan are born in green. You can't change over. Right. You can't. It's no. not allowed. I tried, you know. I really did try. In fact, <laughs> I think there was a time when I was actually a guest of the Lions at a game, and I went with my son, and uh, right in inopportune times, I was like, yes, you know, and the people around Oops. me kind of started. <laughs> Started looking, for, and my son at the time was a complete, you know, Lions fan. So uh, they all were, sh you know, giving my son pop, and not me. But no, uh, you were out. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's one of those things you can't shake. You know. Well, it's a gift now. You cheer, you cheer for G-Roy. It's understandable. Yeah, but ever since like that Montreal game, I mean, we're all still reeling from the Montreal game. Too many game. men. That was really rough. That was really rough. Even for people who aren't Rough Riders fans, I felt for you that day. It wasn't right. It wasn't. Well, it happened. Yeah. That's why they play the games, but ooh, that hurt. Yeah, it was really It hurt. Yeah, really well, bad. we'll see what happens. I was despondent. I had guests, and I stopped talking. I curled, <laughs> curled into a Beetle ball. Position. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Colin James, a new disc. Pick it up. It's the live album, 25 Live, recorded on a Saturday night at the Commodore Ballroom. Colin, thank you for coming in. Thank you. We appreciate you getting up early here to come on BT. Come back anytime to visit. Will do. Good West Van community guy, too, should be said. This man does his part for the community in West Vancouver. It is 8.55. We're back in a moment on BT. Is that the guitar on the cover right there, by the way?